Hi, I'm Dr. Charles Parker with Core Psych Blog, and if you're thinking about the complexity of ADHD diagnosis, I am trying with these series of videos to simplify it a little bit for you. We're not going to make it entirely simple because it's really complex. There are many, many aspects of a person's biology and brain function that can contrib contribute to attention deficit disorder. But in terms of just looking at it from a simple, functional, more or less superficial, functional point of view, so that we can actually target what we want to fix. We really need to look at this second subset. We've talked about acting without thinking and really want to spend a little time on thinking without acting. Many of my colleagues would say that is OCD. It is phenotypically OCD. That means from a surface point of view, if you're looking at the tip of the iceberg, it is OCD. Many of those folks are OCD to a fault. They're thinking, worrying, and fretting and actually compulsively trying to organize things so they can have, in the term we use over on our side, it's anxiolytic, which means it cuts down the anxiety if you get everything arranged and have everything in a place. And what's really going on is they have a key problem, and that is cognitive anxiety, not affective anxiety. Now, they may have affective anxiety with it, but they got thinking anxiety instead of feeling anxiety. And a lot of these folks who'd say, well, are you anxious? Do you have a problem with anxiety? They're a quick answer. And I've asked this question literally thousands of times. This isn't a couple of hundred people that I've gone over this with. Thousands of times. Are you anxious? No. But let me ask you this. Do you worry and fret and consider and analyze and double, triple, quadruple analyze and analyze so much that sometimes you can't even figure out what you're going to do next? And you have to ask your wife, your husband, someone with you to tell you what to do when you absolutely hate it. And then when they tell you what to do, you get mad at them for it? Yeah, that's thinking way too much. No, I don't have a problem with anxiety. But you do, no disrespect, have a problem with cognitive anxiety, with thinking anxiety. Sometimes that's productive where you can just think a great deal and, and solve problems and no problem. Um, sometimes it's very counterproductive. The person's so worried and so fretting, they're actually paralyzed by thinking too much, even though they're not having somatic anxiety. They don't feel it in their chest. They don't feel it in their stomach. They're not shaking and quivering and having anxiety attacks. They're just overwhelmed with thinking. Their, their head is filled with stuff. And guess what they're often diagnosed as? Bipolar illness, the current wastebasket term. All right, so then we got this one here, and then I talked about the third subset where people are compulsively decisive, trying to prevent worry by making things happen. These are the dyed-in-the-wool, quintessential, vertical managers. I'm the boss. I am the boss. Listen to what I'm telling you. Don't argue back. Don't come up with a new idea. You're going to bother me. You're going to give me more stuff that I have to think about. Incidentally, while I'm on that subject, Many of these people, apropos of getting the diagnosis right for ADHD, many of these folks cannot stand psychotherapy. Now, let's think about it. Why can't they stand psychotherapy? They hate psychotherapy. They go in there, and what does a psychotherapist do but ask them more questions? Now, even in our own practice, where we don't ask a lot of questions, we really try to engage the person in, in problem resolution. We're giving that person more to think about, and they are already, it's the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, I like you, Parker. I like you, whoever, but I can't work with you. I've got so much on my plate right now. I don't need more to think about when I'm driving home because my head is about ready to pop right now. And you know some folks like that, and a lot of those folks may or may not have associated affective anxiety. They may or may not be uh, comorbidly, which is, means uh, diagnostically uh, uh, OCD with ADD. So you could have two conditions existing together is comorbid. So you could have OCD, which is more treatable with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and ser serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Bunch of words. I'll tell you about them in a, later, in a later video. The bottom line is if they're ADD and you give them a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, are a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The medicine's not going to work. It ain't going to work. In fact, what it's going to do, it's going to aggravate the problem because it's real simple like this. If a person's got ADD and they're relatively low on dopamine and they have a serotonin problem and they're down with uh, 
some kind of depression, OCD, and worry, and we get the serotonin straightened out, what are we going to do with that dopamine? We're going to pull that down like this, and they're going to actually like, what was your name? What was I talking about? I mean, I, I don't know why, but I just saw my friend the other day in the, in the parking lot outside the grocery store. I didn't know her name after taking this medication. I can't take this medication. Well, what is, why would a serotonergic agent causes an aggravation of a, a decrease of executive function? Thoughts don't come together. And we've seen it on scans repeatedly. So it's, there, there's plenty of biologic evidence for it, even though the naysayers may say that scans haven't been proven. They haven't been sitting with patients talking to the patient about their brain. They've been reading papers and thinking what it might be like. They haven't actually been interviewing patients with brain function pictures in front of them. So, yes, when you actually interview people and you look at that, you can see some significant differences. So with that, I'm going to wind up for this week, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Stay tuned. Come to Course Psych blog. And a lot of this is in the blog and around, and don't forget this, sign up for my new book. There's a little place to sign up, and what will happen will be we'll have some special bennies with that when the book comes out. So we'll see you soon. Thanks for coming in.